Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to TechPoint. Today our guest is Mayran, the CEO and co-founder at Skytail. Hello. Hello, nice to meet you, Christian, and thanks for having me. <laughs> nice to have you on the podcast. <clears throat> at first, please tell us, what is Skytail? Um, Skytail is a security compliance automation company. We help companies um, from startups to mid-market companies to get compliant and stand, stay compliant when it comes for security compliance, privacy compliance, and now AI compliance with our technology and expert advisory. Okay. What's the biggest problem to solve? Why is it important for companies to be compliant? Um, it's important for them because um, they need to sell, and that's a requirement from their customers. They need it because this is the law, and mm -hmm. if they're not going to implement some of the regulations like GDPR and CCPA and, and many others, they won't be in compliance with the law. Um, they need it because multiple reason. If they want to get into the, some specific marketplaces like Zoom Marketplace, if they want sometimes to recruit their next round, if we talk about startups, um, and in, in general to build trust and reduce risk for their customers. So right. that's the main reason. Okay. Uh, and usually what's the most common, uh, let's say, use cases like SOC2, ISO, uh gdpr exactly exactly so it, it's very much depending if, if that's the beginning of the company if that's the first time mm -hmm. they're going to need to do compliance so there it's not going to be their first time um but SOC 2 uh let's say for startups SOC 2 or iso 27001 um, might be the first uh, frameworks that they will uh, interface right in the beginning okay um and for them it's painful because um it takes time uh, you need a lot of resources. They not might not be very knowledgeable about that. Might be their first time, and they need to move fast. And this is how we help companies moving fast while staying secure, and and improving in it with the adherence for all of the different frameworks like SOC two and ISO twenty seven thousand one. And for larger company, there is different complexities. But we do the all the cross mapping, and we save time by all of the redundant work that might need and uh, might be required from these uh, um, organizations. Okay. And who is in your target mostly? Do you target startups and SMBs? or? It will, yeah, we work very closely with startup. We have hundreds of customers over, all over the world, from the United States to different countries in, in Europe and in the EU and the United Kingdom, all the way to Australia and Canada and Mexico, yes. Israel, really all over the world. Um, and yeah, we focus in on the small to mid size businesses, mainly with cloud native environment. Um, so when it comes for startups, startup at the, at the stage of pre seed, seed, round A, sometimes even in, in later stages, uh, we meet them and then we take them through. We implement our technology, we connect with multiple, with dozens of different uh, um, SaaS providers. And then we start collecting evidence automatic, automatically and, and actually doing continuous compliance, changing the, the, um, the old school point in time compliance into, into something that it's always running on in the background. It's in real time and you always know what's the posture of your security good. compliance environment. Good, good. Well explained. What should the businesses know before they are looking to get compliant, before they come to you? What should they know? Uh, first, um, I always love to ask, why, why do you need that? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you don't really need it at, at this stage. So really yes. understand if, what's the reason behind, uh, uh, behind the fact that you want to implement compliance. Uh, they come into us because um, we're helping them really understand what's going on. Um, our approach is, is actually exact, the opposite from checking the box. Really deep dive. Um, balancing between the business needs from the one end to the security compliance requirement um, and, and make sure things moving fast, um, maxim maximizing automation and, and reducing 90% of the time it takes them to get compliant and also okay. stay compliant. But usually how long would it take without your solution and how long it takes with Skytel? So onboarding can take from one day to one week, uh, but then it's very much depend on, on the framework and regulation that they need. Let's say that we are talking about SOC 2. In that case, preparation might take a few weeks, including uh, a readiness assessment, 
and building a work plan and remediating uh, all the gaps that we identified. Basically, we want to understand what are the gaps between the current state, which is how the company operates today, yes. to the desired state, which um, might be SOC 2 in that case. And afterwards, there might be some observation period. Uh, again, it's dependent on the framework. SOC 2, you have an observation period. Uh, for SOC 2 type 2, it's, it's minimum three months. Um, and so we will need to wait another three months. And afterwards, there is the auditor's time to prepare the report and, and everything. So general speaking, might be somewhere between four months to, to eight months, really depend on the company, on the size, the complexity, the stru- structure, and, different, and, and many different other aspects. But after this four to eight months, it's still a continuous progress, right? So they... Yeah, so exactly, exactly. You got this right. Um, so let's say after six months, all right? Let's say after six months, they, they, get, they got compliant. Mm-hmm. Um, and the next audit is going to be um, for another 12 months from the point they finished their previous audit, okay. which means they need all the time keep monitoring and make sure that um, their internal controls is operating effectively yes. with their uh, um, relevant framework, might be SOC 2, uh, might be GDPR, might be ISO 27001. Um, it's it's depend. But um, yeah, that's the case with these, uh, um, these organizations. Okay, okay. And how does the pricing work for you? Um, it's very much depend on the scope because we provide not only the technology, but also um, experts that can walk okay. you through the process. We provide penetration testing. We, we also uh, uh, um, help with finding the relevant audit partners. So we actually close the loop. Um, so it's very much depend what's the size of the company, how many frameworks are relevant, if, if you need any additional uh, professional consulting, penetration testing, and external audit, but prices can start somewhere between five thousand dollars and get to uh, um, to more of that. Very much depend on, on the size of the company. It can get to twenty five thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, but every every case on its own. Okay. Yeah, makes total sense. But still, it's it's a good pricing to start. Uh, thank you yeah. for sharing. How about Thank the you. market? How competitive is it in the compliance space? And how is Skytel different from, from the rest? I think that um, it might be compliant because we're focusing on the SMBs mm-hmm. a, a, at the moment um, all over the world, but mainly in, in the United States, in Europe. That's our target market. Um, we see some companies, and, and I love seeing all the time more companies if they come with different solutions just to, to really try to solve and reduce risk uh, for all of these great emerging technologies. Now we can see AI. Um, it, it, everyone talks about AI. Everyone wants to implement AI. Um, but how can you trust on AI, on artificial intelligence? That's a good question. I was wondering about that. Soon we're going to see also regulation, AI regulations or AI certifications. Um, and that's about like ethical and, and other stuff when it comes to AI, um, maybe trustworthy, integrity, um, data pointing and more. Uh, but when it comes to security, we different by the fact that we understand startups and we build the company to have both the, um, the tech when it counts mm-hmm. and experts when it matters and people when it matters. So we actually like, uh, Another, um, our customer feels like we are one more employee in their ad count. Nice. <laughs> uh, we communicate very fast with them. We providing them um, a top experts uh, in the space of what they need. And everything is integrated smoothly into our platform. So we actually crafted from day one that it will match the consulting match like a glove to an end. And I'll look at, at how we design the company from first end for those companies that not necessarily have the resources to start with implementing and onboarding and need to have 20 years of experience in the space of governance, risk, and compliance. Um, so we are very much focused on engineering, on chief technology officers, also on security team in the early days when there is only one person in the team. And then we can maximize the time and the time reduction, um, we, we can uh, re- reduce a lot of time. We can also improve dramatically the quality any time it, it 
takes them to get compliant and stay compliant. And we also provide uh, uh, not only cross-mapping between dozens of frameworks, but we do complete con continuous compliance. So it's actually changing everything like it used to be, like a point-in-time audit. That was the way doing this a few uh, a few years ago. Yeah. And today it's changing. It's changing rapidly. And uh, it's actually giving value. And it's all on, on, not only checking the box because they need the, the this certification or attestation report in order to sign on a deal and I don't and, and they don't um, really much deep dive into the bits and bytes of what's going on. So that's an opportunity for them to to build processes and procedures and implement tools that will support the scale and the growth of the company. And we work with them, we partner with them in order to take the heavy lift of compliance and they look at it as a trusted partner when it comes for support yeah. and advice away. This is what we do best. Oh, okay, thanks for sharing. Great answer. How about um, I love to know the company story, basically, when you started it and yeah, what was the idea behind it? Um, so I started official. I started three years ago, uh, approximately. Uh, we went out of stealth two years ago, um, and to be honest, I started. It's kind of a by it wasn't planned. Um, I was uh, working at EY at Ernst and Young uh, mm -hmm. at the technology risk department, and I was doing hundreds of of security audits by myself. I was both consultant. And in, a, and in an auditor, yeah. um, I was doing many uh, audits for company based in the United States, in the West Coast, East Coast, New York, uh, Boston, um, and, and Israel. And, and then I, I had a chance to work with people that needed to, to like, get their company compliant. But there was a CTO mm -hmm. who doesn't really have the time, the will, now the resources or maybe the knowledge to really navigate through the process. And then I, I, I could feel their pain and I thought there is must be a better way of doing that. Also, everything is so manual. It's based on taking screenshots and logs and emails. And, and you can you never really understand uh, what's the progress of the audit. Is the ball in my court, at the auditor's court? Uh, what are the open items? What else required? And there were so many surprises that I just felt that must be a better way doing that. And that's what <laughs> led me to start Cycle. That's amazing. I love it. And how big is the team now, today? Um, today, we almost 70 people. Okay. Um, getting close to 100. Uh, we uh, have people all over the world. We have in uh, in Israel, Tel Aviv is our uh, headquarters. We also have uh, uh, big offices in Johannesburg, South Africa, mm -hmm. um, oh. in, uh, in Europe, in the United States. Uh, so we actually, not all over the place, but we have a few sites uh, working closely with customers and um, keep working on, uh, you know, adding more value. That's perfect. I'm curious to know how you found your first customers and what's the <laughs> most successful go-to-market strategy today? Um, oh, I, I think that when I started, I had um, some friends uh, that I shared with them, look, I'm living in EY, I'm starting my, my own venture. And then they connected me with a company based in the Silicon Valley. Okay. Uh, they already did SOC 2 for a while, for like two years. And uh, we had a chat. I told them, look, I will uh, take the pain. I, I will, I'm going to take it from you. I'm going to lead the process for you was an opportunity to actually do the stuff by myself from the company side, but also think how I want to craft my platform. Yes. Um, so after starting, uh, that was the first customer. The second customer actually sent me uh, a message on LinkedIn and they, they gave me a job proposal. They wanted me to come and work for them. Okay. <laughs> and I nicely rejected that, but I offered um, that, look, I have my own startup. The platform is not there yet, but I would love to... Yes. To, to get the job done, you yeah. know, get things done for you. Um, it's going to be like a black box for you. I'm going to take the heavy lift. And in the meantime, I recruited my CTO and we start building the platform. Um, so actually all the pains and all the like what's take the, the most of the time from our customers. Um, that's what we built first in the platform. And then we just. Uh, keep adding more and more uh, um, automation and integration and different modules and features. 
And then the third customer and fourth customer at the beginning it was word to mouth because customer was satisfied, customer from EY called me when the next audit, I told them I no longer work for EY, so go on. And some of them uh, just want me to assist them in the process. Uh, but, you know, that's only, that was a few in the early days. Um, <laughs> scale a company from a few customers to hundreds of customers, it's a different, uh, different engine uh, that, that you need to build. Yeah. But uh, I always appreciate and just love uh, uh, when customers and friends uh, uh, gave me referrals and, and introduced people to me in order for us to assist them. Uh, I also assist companies, you know, because we, we've been startup ourselves. Um, give them some knowledge, guidance, really free yeah. stuff. I was a mentor at the AWS, a Love Accelerator, um, at Saka, at IBM. So um, I just love helping startups. And if they really need us to take the heavy lift, we always love doing that. <laughs> Great mindset. Thank you. What would be your best piece of advice for a starting founder today? Uh, you know, it's, it's not a cliche, like, uh, it might sound like a cliche, but, um, people is everything, never give up and sales is everything as well, at least for me. Um, you know, I, I really think it depends on the strategy and the VCs and, and how do you see this startup in five years from now? Um, if this is a deep tap and you aiming for IPO and exit, or maybe you want to be, um, a, a profitable and you aim in for profitability. And based on your strategy, this is how you should craft um, the, the startup. But I always try to think that and focus um, focus on a niche. Find something that you, you have some personal touch to it. And um, there is a real pain. There is real something that you can help them or improve or do something uh, uh, in the process. And then just giving them maximum value in minimum time. Even that, like, don't focus only on the tech and you have like amazing tech over here. So you need to find a practical application for this tech, but try to also uh, uh, put the, the business glasses and, and take a look from the business perspective, um, how you can actually um, maximize in value. Um, even if stuff will be, might be handled um, in the beginning manually, and then you're going to, learn and improve it's not scalable that's a problem yep. there are some other problems but i think that's a good advice for the beginning at least it worked for me <laughs> absolutely do things that don't scale right <laughs> uh, yeah you know okay. uh, scale it's always a uh, in the beginning you want to scale from zero to ten then from ten to hundred then from hundred to five hundred or thousand you know so uh you always gonna have some scale issues and yeah. this is an ongoing process <laughs> absolutely i have one last question for you What's sure. your favorite software that you use, but apart from Skytail? Um, look, I use Notion, HubSpot, um, Google Meets. I have some, like, that's obvious. I have some other platform, like, uh, look, we have more than 100 platforms. So it's, uh, it's very much depends what's the focus, like on product. We use uh, Mixpanel, for example. We use Ojar. Uh, we have some other tools uh, for marketing, for sales. We use Apollo. So th there is such a big mixture of tools. It's really difficult for me to, to put the nail on something. Uh, but I think that uh, I always love to chat with GPT and, and get some <laughs> reaction, results, you know. Um, so, yeah. Do you have any other uh, things that you want to share on the podcast before they close it down? Um, actually, I think, um, it was pretty like for me on my end, it was really good. Uh, I just want to share that every startup, if you are a startup and you need to uh, get SOC 2 or ISO 27001 or GDPR or HIPAA or PCI DSS, or maybe you are like more mature organization and you just have a few stuff and you want to automate the everything, um, and, um, you know, improve productivity, quality, everything. Um, go on to Cytale, S-C-Y-T-A-L-E dot A-I, and you can, find, you can find over there so many resources. Also, just for um, reading and, and some things to think about. And if you need help, we always love to help. And thank you very much for, uh, for having me. It was a pleasure <laughs> uh, being here.
Thank you so much, Miran. I, you did fantastic and I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>